In problem 2-20, we are asked to determine the design angle phi, which is between 0 degrees and 90 degrees, between struts AB and AC, so that the 400 pound horizontal force has a component of 600 pounds, which acts up and to the left in the same direction as from B towards A. And we take theta equals 30 degrees. So looking at the picture here, this is our horizontal force of 400 pounds and of course here we have theta and phi and now to start solving this problem first of all since we are given forces along with their directions something we want to consider here is vector addition of forces and this is because forces are essentially represented by vectors and so to add vectors we can either use the triangle law or the parallelogram law and in this case, we can simply try using the triangle law. So now we want to go ahead and draw our force vectors. So here is our horizontal force of 400 pounds. And then this is going to be that component that goes from B to A. And this is, of course, at the angle theta, which is also down here due to alternate interior angles. And now starting from the head of force FAB, to the head of the horizontal force. We can go ahead and complete this triangle by adding in force FAC. So now that we have completed our triangle, we can go ahead and add the angle phi, which will be at the same, essentially the same location that it's at on the picture. And of course here from the statement, theta equals 30 degrees. So we can simply substitute those 30 degrees for theta just like so. And so from here, of course, we're trying to find the angle phi. And in this statement, this force FAB is equal to 600 pounds. So I'll go ahead and define FAB as 600 pounds. And now knowing that the magnitude of the forces essentially represent the length of our vectors, here we see that from our triangle we have two known lengths or sides and only one known angle. So for this situation, if we're trying to find another length of the triangle, we can go ahead and use the law of cosines, which in this case will help us relate our knowns with the force FAC. And so the law of cosines states that C is equal to the square root of A squared plus B squared minus 2 times A times B times cosine of theta. So here on the drawing, I'll go ahead and label force F as A, FAB as B, and FAC as C, which is of course the force we want to find. So now substituting these into the law of cosines, we have FAC equals the square root of 400 squared plus 600 squared minus 2 times 400 times 600 times cosine 30. And now we can simply plug this into a calculator and solve for the value of FAC. So this is equal to about 322.97 pounds, which is the value of the force FAC. So now that we essentially know all the lengths or forces of our triangle, what other principle or relation can we bring into uh, this situation to solve for phi? Because remember, we only solved for FAC, but the question wants us to find phi. Well, of course, considering that we know one angle and all sides of this triangle, we can go ahead and directly implement the sine law, which will essentially help us relate our angles to their corresponding lengths of the triangle. And of course, this is because the sine law states that a length A divided by sine of an angle capital A is equal to a length B divided by the sine of an angle capital B. So on the drawing here, I'll go ahead and label angle phi as A. And now to avoid confusion, I'll go ahead and replace the B in the sine law with C. And I'll label the 30 degrees as C. So now substituting in the values, 
here we're going to have 400 divided by sine of phi equals 322.97 divided by sine of 30 degrees. So now multiplying the sine phi to the other side, we have 400 equals, well here I'll go ahead and simply divide out the fraction on the right. And so that is equal to 645.93 and then times the sine phi. Now of course dividing the 645.9 to the other side, this becomes 0 0.619 equals sine of phi. So now solving for phi by taking the sine inverse of 0 0.619, we get phi is equal to about 38.26 degrees. So of course remember that these types of statics problems require a lot of solid understanding of basic and slightly advanced geometry as well as trigonometry uh, really more than anything so I suggest you keep on practicing these problems over and over and pretty much review your geometry and overall get used to seeing forces as vectors and knowing how to pretty much add up or multiply these vectors and as always i hope you found this video helpful and if you did let me know in the comments or give this video a like thanks for watching